I want to share with you guys that you have a real unique opportunity today. You actually have two people that are going to talk to you. James is going to talk to you briefly. And Dave's going to go over the six components of uh, effective communication. And the reason that's a unique opportunity is both these gentlemen are in the top 100 agents in all of Southern California and Hawaii in the Central Terminal System. So that's, that's a unique opportunity for you guys. That's thousands of agents. And so that's incredible to get to actually hear uh, some feedback from there. Now Dave's uh, a master certified NLP coach. This uh, topic that he's going to be going over is, is something that's near and dear to him. And James was nice enough to come in and share for a couple of minutes just his experience when he took the class. So somebody that's high up and experienced in sales and producing at the level he is doing with Central Point One took the class and had some benefit. So he opened up his eyes and ears and received some, some benefit from that. That means anybody else also. So we just have to, what Dave was just sharing with you guys before we started, <coughs> unlearning some other things is really the key to, to this. This is some diff something that's different for most of you. It's absolutely critical to your success. So I'm going to start with James. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. All right, so um, I don't know how many, what was it, a year ago, two years ago? I'm not even sure now. Year and a half. Year and a half ago? Okay. Um, Dave gave this presentation, and it was his first time giving it, and he was really super excited, like he always is, but he gave, you, gave me basically the Reader Digest version, and he was done in five minutes. <laughs> Most people were like this, and me, though, it was perfect, because that's, that's how I learned. So he gave me this version, and just so you guys know a background of me, since I was 16 years old, I have been in commission sales. Um, and so I've been through every class that you could possibly imagine. And so most classes I can't stand being in because it's just a rerun of already what I've been taught over and over and over. But I gave it a shot, and I sat down, and I was actually amazed because it was something I had never heard before. And... Um, you know, I've actually been pretty successful at every listening appointment. Um, I would get a majority of them. Um, and yet, you know, I still was open to listen to what he said. And the great thing about it, the reason why I tell you that is, is that I want you to be open to it because what it did was make my life easier. And so I'm pretty good at reading people. And yet, and I can tell you that when I did this, it was just amazing on how much easier it made the whole presentation. And the other thing is, is that when I got to a certain point, when he gets down, he got, it's called the metal, and basically it's where you were asking for the sell. You, you won't even have to ask for it. Like you, it's done, you already feel, they're in your hands, it's done, and you just, basically you're basically pulling out the contract and having them sign. And if you don't feel that way, which happened once in a while, then you just take a few steps back, go through it again, and when you get there again, you'll feel the difference. And it just really works. Um, so please, uh, you know, stay open to it and give it a shot. Um, I'm still excited about it. I can tell you that in a year and a half, um, I have, in my opinion, I've got 100% of all my listings at my appointments and the reason why I say that because there was one I didn't get and, and I don't count it and the reason why is it was one of those people that you know their home was worth this and they think that their home's worth this like most of them and they wanted somebody to tell them that and they finally did get somebody to just probably a new agent that's willing to just take the listing at a, extremely overpriced All right, I resent that. yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> So they take, they take, they took the, the listing, and I did give them a call back and said, hey, I really hope it does sell for you, um, but do me a favor. Don't just let this person then keep telling you, well, we need to lower the price, we need to lower the price, and get down to what I told you it was worth. Instead, get rid of them and give me a call when it comes that time. So that's why I was saying that's the one time. On all the other, it's 100%, and it's been extremely easy and successful for me. So. Did they call you back? Did they call me back? Yeah. Um, I called them when I saw the listing. Yeah. And, and I called him and I told him exactly that. And you know, it was good because we had a good conversation. He, um, you know, I told him straight up, I go, I'm, 
an honest, ethical person, and I'm not going to do that to you. I could tell you that I could take this listing and then continue to tell you we need to lower it down just to get the listing, but that's not me. It's worth this. I'm willing to try a little more, but I'm not willing to try you know, $50,000, dollars 70000 more. It's just, it, it wouldn't be right. Is it still for sale? Oh, yeah. It's still in the market. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you. So now you guys get to see the longer version of Gary's <laughs> presentation. Because most people uh, are not like James where he he's like, like this. So most of you are gonna you're going to get the uh, the full benefits so you can get the nuances, <coughs> the idiosyncrasies and some of the, the reasoning of why these things absolutely work and why it's a must. And it does tie into some of the other trainings that we've done in the past that many of you guys in the room have not attended that we'll also be doing. That part that James is referring to about reading people, that's a skill. Uh, some people intuitively have it very, very well ingrained in them. Most people, it's a skill that you have to work. It's a muscle you have to build. Like, well, how do I read somebody? What do you have this? What do you do that? So we'll work on that more. However, so, so what... So to feel assured on that, if you feel a little lost, we'll get you there as well. So Dave's going to go over his presentation now. So Dave, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to go nice. And <laughs> no, uh, I'm, I'm glad that I get to come up and help share this with you. This is, this is something that's changed my life as well. So. I'm grateful to be here, and I really appreciate all of you showing up, because I worried this morning, I said, ah, I have no idea. so thank you, thank you for coming. And so, you know, we're all in this room, we are all practicing, have chosen to practice the craft of real estate. And so, it's really, it's really a craft, and, and when you do this, there's things you can do to make it better for you. Your mind can do five things. It can see pictures, it can hear sounds, it can taste taste, it can smell smells, and it can do a little bit of analyzation for you. But that's the that's the that's the five things it'll do. It'll feel. So you've got those those things that are going on there. And so today, what we're going to do is we're going to sharpen some of those tools for you so that you can see that. So there's lots of things linguistically that you can do with uh, real estate. You hear Jeff talking about being read. You're reading people as just as much as you're being read. So. That's going on, that's 93% of your communication, that's huge. So that's going on, this is a great time to, to do this. And with these six components, you'll have the, the ability to go through, I mean, who would like to know that every appointment that you go to, that you're gonna go in and, and cover the most important things for, uh, to get the listing? How would you like to know in that tough situation that you've gotta go talk to somebody, that you've gotta convey a message that you can do that well? <coughs> That you can take and talk to your kids. You can take and talk to anyone. You can talk to yourself. This is something with yourself you can do with. You need to, you need to communicate with yourself just like with just any, anyone else. So, so this right here is a wonderful uh, sheet that we'll give you to take and, and teach you the components. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look on that sheet I've given you. You can see right up there the, the sun. Did you already pass up the sheet? Yes. Okay. Does everybody have one? No, I do not. No. No. Just some deals. Just back in San. No. Thank you, good sir. Sorry, sorry. We did that here one more. Tommy? You give me your extra and then get some deals coming away. Okay. There's a few more here for you. But if you, we'll start with the first component. And so if you look in our planet, or our solar system, what's the brightest star out there? The sun. The sun. And the sun, what the sun does is it shines its warmth on us. It's, we want to take and use the sun because in this one, what we want to do is we want to see the brightness. We want to see the brightness in the people. We want to make that connection. And this is, this is a state you go into. This is when you're, when you're making this connection, you want to make sure that you see, see the, the, the brightness in them. Surface to deep, you can take and you can go up just to say, Sonny, I love that hat. And if you can see Sonny right now, he just had a big smile on his face. It's that, it's that connection with anyone. 
when you see them, you know, just pick up something genuine and say, you know, I love the, I love the dress, the black and white dress. I, I think you look great. You pick up something with the people. Or you can even go deeper and say, you know, here, we're here together today, and I hope that we can get this done for you. Like in this class, I know you're here to learn something. I really hope that we can take and teach you something that changes your life. So you can make that connection deeply. And so, you know, Sonny, what would you say to, to somebody to make that? How do, you, how do you make that connection? When you're in that appointment, what is it that you say to people? How do you make that connection? Good morning. I pay him a compliment. Pay him a compliment. That's it, the compliments. That's, that's a very good way. And you want to be genuine with those. And it's always, there's always something in everyone that you can see that you, you can compliment to take and make it, to make it genuine for you. And so we want to make sure that we acknowledge them and that we see the brightness in them. So that sun is our, our picture of that. And we're going to remember that that's surface to deep. So if we just want to talk surface, see, Jack, I love those kind of shoes. Those are my favorite. I had a pair like that, but my dog really chewed them up. And so uh, mine are gone, but I love those. And so it's so easy to find something that you can do that. It's a great, it's a great breaker there. And then we go to the next component is fire. So when you're sitting in front of a fireplace, how does that make you feel? Ms. Barbara, what do you think when you're when you're by a fireplace and what is it how, what feeling do you get from that? Warmth. Warmth, exactly. What about what about our new agent here in the office? What about you in a fireplace? Mm -hmm. Very good. Warmth, lighthearted, connected. That's that's another thing. What we want to do there. We do this. Can we do this component right here with hugs, smiles, and handshakes? That's what we want to do there. So when you get next to the people, if they if they'll let you get that hug in there, get that hug in it. Make sure you give them that warm handshake. When they give you the handshake, it's the two hand handshake. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you being here. I want to help you. If there's anything I can do today, I'm going to try to make that happen for you. So you want to convey that warmth and that, that thing there. Now the third one is water. And this one right here, we use the iceberg for, uh, for there. Because, you know, in the, in the water, you see the one, little, the one little piece above the water. But what's below that is this giant iceberg. And that's the same in your, in your mind. When I come up to you and I say, hey, Jack, how's it going? You know, he's going to say, Dave, it's great. Keep on going. That's all surface. That's where we're talking right there. We're in surface. Nothing happens. No decisions are made there. It's a comfort level. You, hey, I'll, how's it going? Things are great. Kids are doing good. I'm going to work. We've got these things. All of this is in the surface. You're not thinking about any of this. You won't make any decisions there. You have two minds. You have the, the conscious mind, which is the surface mind. And you have the subconscious mind, which is the unconscious mind. And that right there, uh, that's where all your, all your wants, your needs, your desires, where your emotions at. The, the unconscious mind is a domain for emotion. Memories are stored there. Your unconscious mind breathes for you when you're asleep. It takes and beats your heart while you're asleep. So it's, it's there to protect you. It's, it's a mind that sees nothing but positive. If something happens to you that's so great, you're in an accident or something, people say, how did it go? You said, I don't remember anything. That subconscious mind will bury everything for you. It's going to protect you all the time. And so you need to know that what's stored down there for people is, is the emotion. Now, people buy things emotionally, and they defend it logically. So when you go out on a listing appointment and you get in there and you walk in, you go, hi, I'm Dave Patty with Century 21 Showcase. How can I help you? And the guy turns around and goes, Dave, I'm glad you came out. Just wanted to do a couple of things. How's, how much my house worth? And at that point there, if you turn around, you go, oh, I think it's worth $315. And they go, thank you very much. See you later. Bye. And you're out. And that's where you get stuck in that surface right there. You want to make sure that you want to go in and make a deeper connection. You go through the house and you go, wait, 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 can we, can we take a look at the house? Can we walk around and talk about it? Tell me something about the house. You've lived here for 15 years. What is it? Why are we selling the house? What's going on? Get down to the emotion. Get them down to connect down deeply. Well, you know, I see this little, you know, patio out here. This looks like this is your little private spot. He goes, yeah, Dave, that's where, that's where I go to every night to have a beer and a cigarette. And I relax. It's my, it's my safety area. 
And so you want to get down into those thoughts. You want to get them connected down deep. You want to ask questions about what their wants, what their needs, what their criteria is. Make sure that you're taking and connecting that deep because that'll people don't people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And this is where you're going to show that. This is where that, that component right there comes out real well. Does anybody in here feel that this is a component that they're easy? Is this an easy one for you? Does anybody think that this, this component's harder for you? Or? Very important. Yeah. Okay. But there again, we're going to ask questions. And so remember that when you're, when you're there, you want to take and get them down into that unconscious mind there. Hey Dave, in the context of real estate, what other questions could they ask them as they're out there? Uh, what, what is it that you're trying to accomplish? What do you want to do here? You've lived here for this long. What, what is it that you're doing? These, your kids, you're going to take an up, up move and we're going to just go. What, what, do you, what is it that you're trying to get here? Is it, why are you moving? Who, what, where, when, why, and how? Those are the questions that I try to get answered. Who's doing it? What are you trying to accomplish? Where are you going? Those type of things, and it's a great. This is one that's going to build. The, it's going to build their confidence in you. This is one that's going to bring them into you right here. This is where the appointments start to draw in close to you. They feel like, hey, this guy wants to know what I need. And when they tell you, hey, it's important to me to be in Florida in two months, that's what you want to use that for to keep that as a uh, uh, keeping that as the big picture. So when you're in negotiating something, you say, well, we really want to get you to Florida in the, in two months. That's you know. Their, their wants, their needs. And then we'll go to number four. Now four is air. And so in this room right here, we take and we think, where's the air that I breathe, start, and stop? Where's the, where's the air that I breathe, maybe start, and stop? And where's the air that Jack's breathing? Jack, where's our air? Where's, our, where's my air? Where's your air? And this is for uh, being, making oneness, bringing oneness in, taking and building a team. This, I think, was the most important component for me. As I like to go and say, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I can do this and that. And I didn't realize that what, the, what the seller thought of that. I didn't realize that that was a disconnect for them. Now, with Sally being with me, it's just, we're going to do this. As a seller, two of us, seller, all the people are going to do it us, we, one, together, those type of words, that's going to take and build a lot. That'll help you build a lot of rapport right there, too. So that's another another one of the components that you want to make sure that you're doing. Now, the fifth component is well, going to... Dave, before we leave here, I just really want to emphasize that a little bit more. If you guys are familiar with how most real estate agents advertise and promote themselves, they use their high school picture. And they talk all about me, 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 I, 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 I. And it's all about you. I've done this, I do this, I do this. It's, it's a real huge disconnect. And that's why it's so critical is that Mr. and Mrs. Jones together, we are going to do this. This is what we do at our office and our marketing. This is how we market. It's a teamwork. You know, the whole attitude of teamwork, whether it's the office teamwork or it's the teamwork you're going to you're going to have cooperation with the seller or buyer. And it's very, very, very important. If you find yourself ever saying, well, I do this, I do that, it's, it's something you need to unlearn. It's a big deal. And, and those, that, and, and use them, these don't have to go in any certain order. You're probably using some of these at one time or another. You can use them in any order you want. We put them in this order just this is the way that I, I, I was taught it. This is the way we, I use it. So it's the it's the can do. This is where I've got the biggest change in business. When I use the we're going to do this together. I mean me and the seller. And they once they see that that that's a teamwork. I can see why they feel better about that because if I were going to do it, I wouldn't want for somebody to come and say, hey, do this, do that, do this. When it's a team that we're going to do this together because I feel that this will help you the most. And that's that's you know a, an important part there. Now, number five is Earth, and so they're giving you a picture of our planet for the, the association there. And what that is is Mother Earth, and that's because we want to talk to you about your mothers, what they did for you, 
Mother Earth is to protect us, to nurture us, to, uh, to serve us. So this is how can I help? How can I make this transaction easy for you? What can I do to assist you in this? I know that your husband just died. I know this is, how can I help to make this happen for you? That's the mother earth. And this is, a, this is another great, great component here. Um, you got anything on mother earth there, Jeff? Just it gets back to what Dave said a minute ago. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And the only way you can accomplish that is what can we do to help you You've already asked questions earlier. So what if their goal was to move to Florida in two months? What can I do to help you? So what can we do, I use the eye, what can we do to help you get to Florida in two months to make sure we get there? For some we, people, some people it could be as little as, well, I'm already the husband or spouse or wife, doesn't matter which, is already going to be going to Florida. They may need help with organizing repair people. They may need, who knows what they need help with? You only find out when you ask. And after you've just gone through the water, which is, you know, us, we're together, creating that, that togetherness there, you go right into the earth as to what can I do for you. When they answer those questions, what can I do for you, they're, they're going along with the deal. When they answer, yeah, Dave, you can help me go through the house here and pick out some things that I need to get rid of so that the house shows better. Or, yeah, Dave, you can go through the house with me and show me how I might take and do a few things to make some more money. That is a very great sign. You can pull the paperwork out. You're, you're making the connection there. Those are, that's a tremendous, this is kind of like a halfway point in my end there kind of thing. Are you, or what can I do? Nothing. We're going to make this decision without you and you can go on about your way. You know, it, it's, when they start telling you the answers to those questions, that's a great one. And six, which is my most favorite, because you know me, I love to lay down the metal. Um, it's actually the hardest component for me at all. And uh, it's where we go in and say, hey, are we, are we in or are we out? This is hard as steel. Are we going to do this or not? I mean, here we've got it. Here, here sign the papers tonight. Put me to work. This is, this is uh, one that was for me was my hardest one. I would go in and go through the other components and just hope that when we got down there, I could push the contract over and they could do it without doing it. But now I understand where that, where, how that works. They don't understand to take that, that action until you tell them, say, hey, look, are you in, you out? Are we going to do this or not? This is something you want to do, then here, initial the paperwork, let's get going. I was just at a seller's in, in uh, Durango out in the desert, and I went in and I told them, I said, hey, look, are you in or are you out? Are we doing this or not? I've been out here three times. I've not seen your whole house yet. You're tying your hand, my hands behind my back. How can I, as soon as I did that, they were like, oops. We've upset him. Come on, Dave. You can, we'll, we'll do exactly what you want to do. The metal is is uh, is one that James finds very easy, very easy. And so, so what I would say here is, if you look at these components, I would just say let's talk about a conversation that any one of you have had in the last 30 days, where that conversation went askew, where when you were having a conversation. You did at the end. It didn't get what you want. Can you look at these? Can you look at these? Uh, can we see the whole list, Johnny? Can you look and can you think back to how that conversation went? And can you think of what you what, where you missed uh, where you missed the boat? Daniel, can you have you had a conversation in the past 30, 40 days that has not gone in the way you wanted it? Did you feel that you could have done better in the conversation? Um, I, you know, I just did a couple days ago. I was talking to Jeff with his client. Um, as soon as I showed up at the door, I mean, this client was just very like negative, and very like not even eye contact with me. You know, so I think we're probably number three. You know, I should have probably gone back and just um, asked. Maybe we should have focused more on the mom. Ask some more questions. What was she? You know, the person, like you said, what was the person selling the, the property and stuff like that? So I think a little bit more. Just get, you know, think that a little bit more on that. What was my point for that? Yeah, I find that one one of the best ones because once I know what your wants and your needs and your criteria are, it's easy for you to sell. It's easy. 
when you tell me I've got to do this, I want to do that, we have to be here, that's what I use for all of the closes. When people say, geez, Dave, it's, it's Christmas Eve, and I don't think that this is the right time to sell my house. I go, I agree with you. I can see how you feel that way. But have you ever, have you ever thought that maybe you didn't know what you didn't know? Have you ever had a time when that happened? Well, I think that's one of these times is when that happens. That people don't realize that during the holidays, the buyers that come to look at the houses, they're very motivated. They're, that's what we want is motivated people. And so you can use that you can use that 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 their wants needs criteria to actually close the transactions. Uh, that water would that be tie downs because you're really not asking a question, you're moving them toward a yes answer. Yeah, it could be. You can use the tie down there, you know, isn't it, shouldn't it, couldn't it, wouldn't it, don't you agree? You can say you know, Barb, getting the most for your house is important, isn't it? You can use those while you're finding that. The seller says, you know, what's important to me, Dave, is that we get the most money for the house. But geez, Tom, I agree. Getting the most money is important for the house, isn't it? And those are great things. Here. That's just another part of the class we can teach that too. But that is where you can use it. But the wants and needs there, like Daniel said, if you don't have that, it's, it's very artificial at that point. And when you come to the end and you've pulled the trigger and you've asked for the deal and you haven't covered that and you find that's that out, that's a very disheartening situation. That's I've done that exact thing. It's, you know, when I went in there, I thought that, you know, they told me I sold the mother's house and the brother's house and I was going to list the sister's house and I went in and I said, I am here. I, you know, and I they were they had all told me they we told her all these great things. But when I left there, I go, geez, I didn't, I don't know exactly why she wanted to. I just was told, you know, so you, you can you can blow it there. And so uh, any others, Daniel, that, that you feel that you that you had there? Yeah, I think it was more. What about one that went really well? What about a conversation? Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry. I, I saw your hand. Well, don't be mad. That's a, no, I've done two recently, one that went well and one that went bad. Okay, let's talk about the one that went bad. The one that well, didn't go bad, but I went in there to see the guy. It was an up desk call. I went in to see the guy. I spoke with Jeff about this, and he, he was, his wife isn't going to retire until December, so I didn't want to. I left him you know, to sign the listing agreement, not hold it. But he didn't want to sign it this soon because December's so far away. Anyway, so I left it with him, stayed in contact with him, mailed him stuff, talked to him, and everything else. But he calls me back, but I didn't save his number on my phone, which I should have. Then I get so many calls with the rental stuff. Anyway, but he called us, the neighbor came over, found out he wanted to saw it, and I listed it. Some were still a long way away, too soon to list. Anyway, the guy said he's already been pre approved at the bank, does this whole thing. But he does call me, but I call him back in two hours when I get to my voicemails. And I, if I would have saved his name, yeah. I would have known it was him, and I would have made a quicker effort anyway. I lost him because they didn't use any agents. They just went through each other. His next door neighbor actually bought it. And then the second one, which I'm in escrow with now, is I went to a property and the people had other agents there, so we're all in the room at the same time, which is like a used car situation, which is brutal. So I excuse myself. I tell them, look, this is getting to look like a used car salesman. There's too many people in here. I'll just leave. Let me tell you, I just give them a quick synopsis of what I can do for them. And I left. They called me within. I wasn't even halfway down the street. And they call me back. They go, just by you leave and tell us what you can do and leave it and not making it awkward for us. We knew you were our guy. And I'm double ending that one now. So Yeah. Well, you know, I like, what, I like what you said there because that's something we haven't really talked about here. But this isn't something that takes place over an hour or two hours. This can be done very quickly. You can just go up and say, hey, real quick, I just want to know, I want to thank you for letting me be here because I know your time is valuable and I, I like, I see what you're doing. I really want to be a part of that. I want to help you. And, you know, I, I want to. Give them the hugs, the handshakes, the smile. Tell them, say, you know what, I'd love to sit down to you and find out what you really want to do, what, what, how I can go about helping you. How, do the things over very quickly. Quickly, You can do this in just a couple of minutes and give everything out and actually do the six components real quickly. So it's not, it's not something that you have to take and sit down and do over an hour. You can take and formulate what you're going to say real quickly. You know, when you're, when you're at the up desk and you're those type of places that you're on the phone, you have one modality that you you have a chance there. These people can't see you through the phone. They cannot take it. You know they can't see that smiling face. They, when you meet Sonny, it's one thing. But when you talk to him on the phone, somebody may not get that what we get when we meet him. 
And so you've got that one modality, and that's critical that you use the six components there. You want to make sure that you cover that because this will get you more appointments than not. When you're on the up desk, you're answering the phone calls, take and keep one of these sheets right next to you and make sure. Just, just go down and start checking them off. Say, I'm going to take and do this. I had a, a client that I met recently t at a uh, house to see a couple of houses I had in Highland that were close together about the same price. And he said he wanted to be wanted to see one. So I went in the first house. I said, you know, hey, we'll take a look around. And I was just letting him do his thing. And at the end of the him seeing the house, he goes, I'm not going to be a player in this one. And when he said that, it just struck me wrong. Like, You're not going to be a player in this one. <laughs> what does that mean? I said, he said, yeah, and if you got a few minutes and you can show me that other one you got over there, I, I'll, I'll take a look at it. And I was going, oh, great. And so I said, I, on the way over, I told Sally, I said, hey, look, let's, let's use this as an opportunity here. We'll put a little attention in our intention. We're going to turn this guy around here. And so when I got in there and we got in the house and he started talking, I said, hey, I appreciate you coming. I, I appreciate your time. I said, you know, you think about it. I don't know where you were born. You were somewhere all the way across the world, it looks like to me. And here we've come from totally opposite sides of the planet all these years. And here we meet today. And you want to buy real estate, and I want to sell real estate. And I said, I just see something a little, little neat there. I mean, we have a chance here to make something happen if we choose to. And the guy goes, oh, you're right. He changed. And I went through the components <coughs> with him. And he turned around and he said, Dave, I think this is a great house. Let's make an offer full price. Now, it never turned out, but I'll tell you what, I turned the guy around there. I was going to the next appointment and I thought, hey, this is a lost cause. And you, you can take and use these and turn all kinds of situations around. Anyone else here, has, have you had a conversation with somebody that went, went really well and that you can see how you covered all of these? Okay, what's, what's your least favorite of these? When you're talking to people, which, Barb, which one do you, do you find is the easiest to do? Where do you, you're a, an incredible woman. I've worked with her for years. She's spectacular. What is it that you feel that you do the best? Let's make this a little easier for you to see. We'll give you one that's... Filled out here. See, Johnny's a Johnny's a miracle man. You know, he uh, he takes in uh, visual aids or yeah. Um, for you guys, for you guys to make the the next step in your in your skills, you need to be really paying attention and don't just pluck this off. What Dave's asking you, he's going to ask you, what do you think you're best at? What do you think you need the most help with? And if you can't ask yourself those those questions, those basic questions, and I'm going to come back and touch on Darren's in just a minute on the one where the neighbor bought the house. If you can't really get into your, your own mind and, and be honest with yourself, there's going to be no growth. You, you have to do that or you will not grow. So please give, <coughs> give it your attention when Dave's asking this and really be honest with yourself. Yes. I'll, I'll yeah, tell right. you another thing, just, just to put a little similarity in that, my house over on Gene Street, Redlands, that the next door neighbor bought it as well. When I was there that night to list it, he, he came to me and said, Dave, I just I just sold the house back east. My grandson and I bought a house in Kansas and we fixed it up and we put it on the market. We sold it ourselves for more money than we were even asking. And I think maybe I should try that here. But see, I had gone through his wants and his needs and his criteria. And I said, I said, but you told me this is November the 20th, just before Thanksgiving. It, I said, you told me you want to be in New York in January. You need to be there. You're telling me the real estate market's collapsing. That he had, he felt that his friends were telling him, hey, if you have real estate, to sell it now. I told him this. I, I'll go along with your, your picture, but it's not my picture. I've been told differently. But when I was able to know those wants and needs, that was what gave me the ability to say, no, but you told me you want to be in, in New York by January. Isn't that what we're trying to do here? And he goes, yeah, Dave, you're right. Let's list the house. I'll tell you, he gave me three more objections that same night, and uh, I gave him that same, that same, you want to sell the house, you want to be in New York by January, and he signed the paperwork. I took all the pictures that night because he was, he was going to take and give me a short listing. I was going to have until January the 1st, November the 20th to January the 1st to sell the house. I went out, I said, well, I'm taking the pictures right now. 
we're just going to do this that's just getting dusk we took the pictures we went home we put it in the computer that night and sold the next day for more than i listed it for oh, wow. um for the neighbor the neighbor down the street was trying to buy a reo and had been bringing their kids back and forth to redlands for six months trying to drive back and forth if i'd have left there that night and hadn't got that it would have gone to somebody else every listing you don't get someone else gets someone else is going to take and get it and so uh these components this this saved it for me right now and so what else what do you do what do you feel is the easiest for you tommy what can what when you go out on the plane what what one of these do you feel that you give out the best i know it's what's the most difficult is the fire and the light i get those connections I get on I'm just too introverted I need to you know what I was about to say uh, Jeff you, the last office meeting when you said we're talking about connecting with people and walking on the beach and I don't know how you're doing this and that. that really uh, hit home for me good yeah good and that's and you guys as salespeople can see that if you're struggling with one and two the next ones are going to be really hard to do because and if you have, I'm sorry, if you have, if you haven't made that connection with the warmth and the and the brightness and all that, it's hard to go now down into the more complicated issues because they don't have the warm fuzzies for you. You haven't earned the right yet. So, if anybody's having trouble with one and two, that's something you need to really, really work on. Can you explain more again? The light, seeing the brightness in something understand that all of these things are actually states it's not necessarily just a word it's the way that you want to feel the quickest way to get somebody to go into state with you is do you go into it first go into the state of i see the light i see that barb i would love to help you with what you want to do i can tell you're a sweet kind person see the light in them do so you guys see that in Dave when he's talking to you? Just forget oh, yeah. the meeting. It's but when you're in the office walking around, do you see the light in him? Yeah. yeah. Do you also see people that, hi, how are you? How do you yeah. do this? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's like when I was talking last week about repelling people, if you're a salesperson and you're uh, uh, not making eye contact, there's not a smile on your face, there's not a, oh, wow, great to see you, a little enthusiasm, excitement, you're repelling really obvious. You're really nobody, them. Yeah. nobody can make you feel anything. If if you feel happy, sad, or mad, <laughs> you've been had. Because I, if I could do anything for you right now, I'd make you feel loved. I'd make you feel unstoppable. I'd make you feel empowered. But I can't. That's something you do for yourself. And so these are states to be in. And you definitely want to be in that state when you go there. When you go in, you look at the sun, you go, I'm going to see the light. And you want to project that 93% of your communication is nonverbal. And if you go in a state of confusion and anxiety and frustration, you are broadcasting that more than you ever know. And you've got to take and say, you know what? I'm going to go in there and I'm going to take and let them see the light. I'm going to give them that little bit of a love. And then the go just, just keep going down through it. And even if you're in the conversation, and you start to feel the disconnect, run them through your head. Say, what is it I haven't done? More often than not, what I find is I have not said three. Be like water. Be like Bruce Lee. Water always finds its course. It goes around. It goes over. It goes through. It goes under. You have to get that. That's the, that's the picture to put in your head so that you take and you find out that you're, you're coming up to an appointment and everybody's not like, hey, Dave, let's get going. You want to take and run back through there and say, what is it that I haven't done? Which one am I not doing? Who else here feels it? Now, Becky is a superstar. You know, she, she is the master. We took a test together. She's a chameleon in, in, in this stuff. So what do you feel, Becky, that you do the best at? Fireplace. The fireplace. And you know what? Knowing Becky, I can see that. I can see how she can come across warmth and, and smiles and handshakes. That's a, that's a that's a great. What do you feel that you're worst at? Metal. Metal. And so why do you feel that that's that? Why is it that you feel that way? What what is stopping you from there? You if you've covered these components, people want to be people want you to take charge and and get this done. It's it's the natural progression to a well done presentation. 
And so... When you don't value yourself, then you don't feel like you deserve it. So you don't so, ask for it. So, so there you go. There's another thing that we could help there. Listen to the story she tells herself when you don't value yourself. Can you remember a time when you were unstoppable, that you were you could achieve anything you wanted, you had the world by the short hairs? Can you can you remember a time? Yes. Can you see through your eyes right now? Feel what you felt, hear what you heard? Really? Can you really feel it? Yes. Becky, what was there then that's not now? What was present then with you that's not present now? A finish line and a police escort behind me when I was finishing the marathon. <laughs> you know, but, but inside of me, I, I had a new, like, because I thought I had given up, I, I didn't think I could make it. And then when I saw the finish line and everyone was cheering and I actually turned around and I had the police escort behind me, I just, like, went that extra 40%, you know, that they say we have in us. And it just, I got renewed energy. And then I saw the end in sight. Went for it. I remember that. Yes, awesome. you, you were there. What's here now that wasn't here then? What wasn't there then? What with you is now that wasn't then? Just a lot of changes in life have led to a roller coaster of ups and downs and, you know. When and that's why, that's why I say that to stay young, to do this, you must unceasingly build the ability to remove past learnings that served you well at one time that no longer served you well. You want to take and be able to unlearn past behaviors and take and learn new ones here. That's, things have changed for everyone. The internet, all this stuff has changed. Real estate, when I started, you should see it. It was like we caveman days. We had the, we had the, we carved it out of the stone. <laughs> and things have changed so much, but but adapting to those new ideas and those new things. And what about what about someone else? Let's see, Jack. What is Jack was Jack was the number one in the office when I started. He was he was the shit, and he went around. <laughs> and he had the money. He had it all, and. and uh, so, so what do you feel that, in, in this, Jack, when you want to lose your which one of these do you feel that you're best at? Number six is, no, what I'm best at, uh, I was just thinking what my big problem is, number six. Uh-huh. Uh, number, number two, I think, is my favorite, what I'm best at. I can see that, too. I can see how that is there. That's, that's it. And you know, in the classes, we hear the same thing, that metal's hard for everybody. Nobody wants to do that. That's a difficult thing. But when you ask, when you decide, you can do this, you can do this with firmness and not be rude and not be hard and not be abusive. So you definitely want to go in and ask for it. You want to take and say, here, if you'll initial it, the paperwork tonight, you can put me to work right now. And I will guarantee you we'll be out there you know, doing what we can do. So. Let me, share, let me share something. Darren, on, on your situation, what that is an issue of the, on the breakdown of the house next door, the buyer, person next door buyer, whoever it was, that's an issue of the metal. It's, now, there could be some other variables, variables in there. But one of the things that is, I've always struggled with because of my personality is being a pushy closer. I, to me, in my mind, I don't like that. And so I don't like that done to me. Now. I don't do what you guys do every day. I just occasionally, for friends and family, we list a property. I've had the experience twice in, in the last year, once just recently, but twice in the last year, I've had somebody say to me that they would list, list the property with me, guaranteed, no problem, and both of them in there with a happy ending. But both of them, when they decided to sell their house, they started doing like garage sales, started selling stuff. Everybody crawls out of the woodworks. The neighbors, the, the people at the garage sale, this. Everybody has a realtor. Everybody has a friend. Everybody has this. Everybody has that. One got extremely pushy where a lender came up to the house and said, hey, I've got a buyer. Give it to Jeff. Uh, they, he said, oh, I'm already, oh, I'll be working with Jeff. And, oh, give it to Jeff. I'll bring you a buyer. And, and we can do all the paperwork and, and do all this stuff. And somebody that used to be calling this office is not allowed to. And 
And so, I mean, I could have very easily have lost that if the connection with this person wasn't really, really tight. It was more of a, of a, a uh, ethics, a strong religious person. The most recent one I had, I, I would have lost. There was a gentleman that called me up and said, hey, I need to sell my house. I've worked with him in the past. And a uh, real nice older, older gentleman, his wife had passed away. And from all the classes I would learned, that even though I, he said, you know, he had me come out, looked at everything, I said, this book about this. And he said, but I, I really need to do an estate sale. I need to do all these things first. It's going to be a couple months before I can really put it on the market. And the old me would have just said, OK, great. Give me a call when you're, when you're ready. Thank you. Thanks for calling. Give me a call when you're ready. No, no, no problem. The new me said, that's great. That's fabulous. Let's, we'll get the paperwork done. I can start doing my, my stuff, get all my things I need done. And when we're ready, I'll even help you. you know, what are your needs, wants, and all that? I'll even help you with the estate sale, arrange that for you. And let's get get me get me officially hired so I can go to work for you. Guess what happened the next day? The next door neighbor said their son is interested in buying the property. In fact, he even came down. I think AJ, you showed him the house across the street. He he came down. Um, fortunately, he wanted wanted none of those things. Sorry, AJ. I didn't know it was. Uh... <laughs> yeah, well, it's totally done that. Yeah. Uh, and it's clo it closed yesterday. Anyway, I need to put it in the But the, my point is, is if I had just walked away and not, everything else was super in place. All five others were just nailing. He was telling everybody I was his realtor, telling his family, his friends, and, and everything. And then I had just let it go. I would have lost the deal. I would have lost the deal. And that's that's happens every day with all of us. Because really, number five is the hardest thing that most people have to deal with. And, six. Excuse me, thank you, number six. It's the hardest thing most people have to implement. And if you just follow these, these steps and really build it, it's just a, like Dave said, it's a natural progression. It'll happen. It'll happen as long as you remember it's on your freaking list. James actually helped us do up this. He designed this. He takes us on every appointment to remind him. Blah, 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 blah. And somebody, if somebody asks him what this is, oh, just pretty pictures. And James texted me, by the way, and said he wanted to, to uh, he forgot to, <coughs> to say in his, his brief talk, was that for weeks and weeks and weeks, Every time he'd see Dave in the office, he'd go up and shake his hand. He did. Thank you. I love it. Thank you. Thank I you. It. For, it might have been in months that he it was. Would, it was. That he would go up and see Dave and shake his hand because it made such an impact. So you take this on your appointments with you, so you, you don't you don't drop any of them. You know, it's like sometimes you guys will uh, make calls to your sphere of influence. It cracks me up. Absolutely cracks me up. You'll call your sphere of influence to, to prospect. Hey, hi, hey, this is. Uh, I'm gonna just say Becky because you've never done this. Hi, this is Becky, and I just wanted to just say hi, get caught up, blah, 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 blah. Well, how are the kids, how's this, how's the, how's the husband, oh, yeah, he's still, blah, blah. and okay, all this stuff. Okay, well, great, we'll talk again soon, bye. Where's the, uh, uh, are you thinking of selling or, or anything, or you know, anything really real, real estate related? Sometimes we forget the metal of, of merging that in as a thread into the conversation. It's very interesting because a lot of the stuff I learned last week at the Tom Ferry seminar. You mean Tom Ferry's teaching my stuff? Well, kind of, but they're very big on doing things like You're that without the ask. It's very important to, like if you do a, a message on Facebook, a private message, you don't want the ask. You want to say, hey, how are you? You want to do things without the ask once in a while. Absolutely. Otherwise you're gonna just come across sales. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a time and, there's a time and a place yeah. for everything. If you're put your what was the phrase you said? Put your attention, attention on your, on in your, your intention. intention. If your purpose is to you've already done all those other things. Right. So you've done all the things that Becky's saying, you've stayed in contact, you you've sent them the happy birthday notes with no ask at, and what you're saying with there's no sales in part of it. You've done all those things. Now you're getting on the phone, and it's time to harvest the crop. Yep. And you've got to ask. Yet, sometimes people forget to ask. Mm -hmm. They forget that final step. So yes, she's 100% correct. That's an important part. Otherwise, you're going to be one of those people where 
your friends and family see you coming and they go the other way. Because you're just going to be asking about who needs to buy yourself. Because that's not the whole thing. Yeah. Well, one thing that I've started doing now that I've just started in real estate is like, I'll ask my buddies, like, hey, how are your parents doing? How, how's the house? You know, now that you're out. And then I've got friends now that are getting to the point where they're starting to have kids. Like, hey, like, how's the house? Like, you just ask how the home is, like, how it's treating them and this and that. And then it opens the door of conversation of, oh, are you looking to buy yourself? It's not. It's so you, it still comes across as you're caring about mm -hmm. them and their life, but it's not sales. Sure. And even in the phone call situation when you're getting ready to harvest your crop, you still go through this on the phone. Just don't leave off the last step. Still go through the, the touchy feeling and stuff. Another yeah. quick example. My friend sells Plexus, and every post that she puts, I, I think, I, from what I could see, is Plexus related. And every time she reaches out to me, it's Plexus related. Even though she knows I won't buy it, I told her I'm not doing it. Um, I it's pink drink. But I don't, like, right now, I don't even look at her posts, and I don't even read yeah. her text messages a lot, which is sad, because she's, like, a longtime friend, but I just can't. It gets back to what we've said many, many, many times. When you're doing posts on Facebook, four to one ratio. Yep. Four, just nothing to do with real estate, one real estate. So I'll tell you, I felt that same way, like she did, about that, the saying that all the time. And I recently had a trainer come up to me and goes, Dave, well, that's that's an interesting way to think about that. You don't want to be pushing. You don't want to put out there that what you're doing very often. He said, I was just talking to Pepsi Cola, who was telling me that during the Super Bowl last year, they put out an ad in East Los Angeles that cost them $11 billion on the, on the television in order to uh, put their ad on there. And it wasn't that... Uh, Pepsi Cola was trying to attract these people there, and it wasn't that Pepsi Cola didn't know that they didn't know who Pepsi Cola was, but they understand the value of that. You know what they they tell us in these these things that the phone calls you make, you know that the people that make phone calls a lot of times they figure that they're they don't get a contact until the seventh call. How many in here have ever called anybody seven times? And well, Tommy's on the phone. But I never did. I'd call you once, hey, this is Dave, you know, I got a lead that you wanted to buy. Next day, hey, I didn't hear back from you, I'd love to talk to you. The third time I was basically going, if I don't hear anything now, I'm done. And so you definitely, definitely put your stuff on there. Make sure that you're putting on social media, make sure that you're doing it. This is this is your opportunity to do that. That's free advertising. That's yeah. incredible for you. Lead buyers, boys, yes, yeah. You've got to stay out there. You've got to keep that out there. And I would say go and you you see her doing that. Ask her what her results are. She wouldn't do that if that wasn't her results weren't weren't huge. But is there any one of these that you you see today that you feel you never used and that you're going to use? I just, I just want to. Asking questions. Asking questions. Mm -hmm. Good, that's powerful. And that's huge. Powerful. Mm -hmm. That's huge. That's that's one of the ones that's that's probably the most important of anything. If you're going to help them get what they want, it's knowing what they want. So that's fabulous. Any anybody else? Do you have any questions? Is there anything that you're not sure of? Is there anyone having any trouble with any others that we can we can go over? Because we got the time here with you. We'll do anything in our power to help you. If, there's, if you say I've got a question, yeah, I tend to do that. Leave out the questions. You know, they. As soon as they mention, you know, I'm inspired. Oh, you know, I'm <laughs> at the door, you know, without even knowing where the hell I'm going. Yeah, I didn't um, notice that I was not doing that with AJ. So then I was like, oh my gosh, he asks questions. So that just happened yesterday. And you know, we, we have these classes where we see people that do this. Mm -hmm. And if you don't ask those questions, the high eye that, uh, on the disc assessment, They'll sit there and go, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, and just see you later, bye, and never work with them. So they won't tell you what's wrong. So it's it's critical that you take and cover these. For those of you that remember in the past we've talked about this, when you're at the up desk, when people call in about a house, are they always buyers? 50% of the time they're sellers. But they act like they're a buyer. And so if you talk to them, if you don't ask questions, the, then you don't discover that, and then you treat them like a buyer. Hey, you want to talk to a lender, you want to do this, or you're pre-qualified, blah, blah, blah. 
and they're, they're going to give you all this, these surface answers because you haven't built the rapport. And if you just simply, they call about a house, and you say, I'd be happy to look that one up. And while you're looking it up, you just ask them a few questions. Oh, how long have you been looking? Oh, do you need to sell before you buy? You ask them three or four questions, and you can hear it in the tone of their voice if they're starting to get frustrated, but they still want the answer to their question. So you've got a very brief period of time where you can ask three, four, or five questions, and they will answer them. And then you give them, the, and you say, oh, this computer's running a little slow, I'll get you an answer in just a sec. And then you give them the answer to the question. Becoming a master asker of questions is amazing. But remember, take these as a state as well. Take it as a state. When you come to metal, then go into that. Say, hey, look, i got to go into the metal state. Okay, now it's time for action. There's only one thing left here. We've talked about this. This is good for you. It sounds like this is the right thing to do. There's one more part here, Tommy. I need you to initial this and put me to work. You're going to have to input that. Go into that state yourself. Go into the feeling of metal. Go into going hard as steel, knowing that that's important, because that's an intricate part of the end. So you they have to be in that order. No, no. But a lot of times you walk up and you go, hey, Barb, it's so good to see you. I'm, I'm happy to see it. It's good. I love it. Thank you, thank you. There's your hugs and your smile. You can cover that first. You know, on, on appointments that you go to, that, that you're in a natural connection, that you've made that super connection, some of this isn't quite as, as critical because you, you're, on a, on, you're connecting on each other's primary representation system and it's going really wonderful. But this is for when it's not quite so perfect. When, when, when you walk in and you see the, the stone wall that you're facing, when you go into the appointments that you know they're not, they're in an angry state of mind. You want to get somebody out of anger, go into a state of, of calm, peace, and serenity with first. They <coughs> go there with you. So stay in these states. Remember light is seeing the sun, seeing the brightness, and seeing something important. Fireplaces, the warmth, it's, connect, it's the connection you're going to make. Water is, you're going to get their wants, their needs, their criteria. You're going to be like Bruce Lee. You're going to go under it, over it, around it. You're going to find out everything. Whatever they're saying, I just want to know what it is you need. Then remember to go through the, the air. Say, once I find out these things, I know you want to be there in New York and whatever, but then it's us, we together. And then Earth, I want to nurture you. I want this to be great. We want to make a great connection. I want you to feel free to call me anytime. If anything comes up, you have questions, I want, it. I want you to know that I'm available to you. I answer my phone 24-7. And you know what, Mel, I've got to get going, so let's sign right here, let's put me to work. And you'll find that they'll do that. And so, please remember this. When you're on the phone with somebody and you're on an appointment, cover those. So. Get ready to move. You're ready to move. You're ready to move. Any other questions for Dave? Okay. What questions do you have? What, what, what have you learned? What do I need to know? Okay, good. I don't need to worry about it. Yeah, it's easy for me when I see the picture. Thank you, Dave.